Hello everyone, my name is Marvin Ouyang. I'm the Executive Vice President and the Chief Scientific Officer at Science in Biosciences. So in this presentation, I'd like to tell you um, the platform uh, for the rapid generation of genetically engineered mouse and rat models at Science in Biosciences. So uh, first, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes uh, to give you a, a very brief introduction of the company. So Cyogen Biosciences is a life science and services company uh, founded in 2006. Uh, we are specialized in the custom generation of genetically engineered mouse and rat models, and also we offer downstream breeding services. Uh, the company is headquartered in Santa Clara, California. Um, the company has been growing really very rapidly during the past few years. Now we have over 600 employees um, and we have off offices and facilities in China, Japan, and Germany. So all of our animal facilities are ALAC accredited and all assured. We do run a very vigorous health monitoring program to make sure that the animals are of high quality. So here shows the state of the art molecular biology lab and our offices. And uh, we have been serving over 1,000 organizations worldwide. You can see that the, our clients uh, are all over the globe. And here are just some highlights of our animal model services. Uh, we actually produce more custom mouse and red models than anyone else in the world. So last year alone, in 2019, we have generated over 4,000 mouse and red lines for our clients. And we offer the so-called one-stop shopping experience uh, for our clients which means that all you need to do is just tell us the name of your gene of interest and the, the biological questions you would like to address. And then we will do the rest. We will do uh, like the, from the stretch design, model generation, to all the way to model delivery. So, uh, and also the company has been dedicated to technological innovation such that we can bring new technologies to animal model generation such that we can by applying the new technologies to model generation the turnaround time and the cost can be greatly reduced and then we can pass the cost savings to our clients so this is why that we can offer the most competitive price in the industry and the low price doesn't mean the low quality uh, we do stand behind our services, and uh, if we cannot deliver the animals that we designed for you, you will get your money back. And finally, uh, we do own the IP portfolio, the full IP portfolio uh, for the technologies that we used for animal model generation, so which assures you the freedom to operate on your models. So we're really very excited that the animal models that we generated has been, you know, have been playing very important roles in our clients' research and the drug discovery. And up to now, uh, our animal models have been cited by 3,600 publications, many of which are of high impact journals like the Nature Series, uh, PNAS, and uh, you know, uh, some, some very high like molecular cell biology, etc. So, we know that there are many different types of genetically engineered mouse and rat models which can be generated by a, range, a wide range of different technologies. So, but roughly, the item models can be grouped in two uh, categories. One is like the random integration model. So basically, if you want to overexpress, just want to overexpress the gene of uh, your gene of interest in a mouse or rat, we can use like the protein injection just to you know to do a regular transgenic, or we can use the piggyback transgenic to generate uh, the model for you. Um, however, if you would like to target specifically modify a locus, 
in the mouse genome, then the you know, the year cell based gene targeting or the the the, the newer CRISPR Cas9 technology has to be used to create this mouse model. So next I will go through these different technologies um, for you. So um, this is the procedure to generate a transgenic mouse by protocol injection. So like as I said, if you only want to overexpress your gene of interest in the mouse, then we can make um, a transgenic construct uh, for you, and then after the the, uh, the uh, targeting con uh, sorry the transgenic um, uh, vector is made, then uh, this vector can be micro injected into the one cell stage mouse embryos, which can then be transferred into pseudo pregnant females, and then during this process, uh, the transgenic construct can be integrated into the mouse genome uh, and then so that the, in some of the apps we are carrying this transgenic vector which will express your gene of interest. So this is a, a process of a product to use the product, product injection technology to generate a transgenic mice. So we can use specific Tissue specific promoters to drive the expression of the transgene such that this expression can be restricted into specific tissues. Like these are just uh, some different promoters that we have been used to successfully to drive the gene expression in specific tissues. So we can see that this process is really very straightforward. You only need to design a transgenic vector make a vector and then perform the injection and your screen pops. So usually we can get the found animals in as short as three months. So it's basically it's very, very straightforward technology. Uh, as I said, this technology can only be used to transfer a foreign gene into uh, the mouse genome. Um, so you can overexpress your, your gene of interest in vivo. Uh, however, if you, you, you would like to specifically modify a specific locus in the mouse, then different technology has to be used. The most classical technology is the gene targeting via homological combination in ear cells. So, for example, if we would like to specifically disrupt this gene of interest, then we need to, uh, based on the sequence of this locus and the surrounding locus is we have to design a gene targeting construct which is composed of a five prime homology arm, a selection marker, a three prime homology arm, and a negative selection marker. So after the engineering of this targeting construct, this construct can be electroporated into in vitro cultured mouse ear cells and embryonic stem cells, which can then be selected by G418. So only the ear cells carrying this targeting construct can be can survive this selection, and uh, but this the surviving clones most of the surviving clones will carry this targeting construct with the random integration. So only a very small percentage will undergo homologous homologous recombination, which this neomycin cassette will replace this gene of interest such that in this year cells, the gene will be disrupted. So next, we will need to use the, like the PCR to screen out this, uh, to screen uh, this uh, uh, targeted year cells. And then by thousand blood analysis, we will confirm this gene targeting um, is correct. And then after we have the correctly targeted year cells, this year cells can be injected into 3.5 days mouse embryos, which is a blastocyst stage mouse embryos. Uh, and then, although that this ER cells has been modified and in vitro culture for many generations, this ER cells can still, you know, uh, uh, can still contribute to the mouse, em mouse embryo development. So the, the animals that we get from this injection will be chimerical animals which will be um, 
uh, contributed from both the donor blastocyst and in visual culture the ear cells. Uh, so we call this animal is a camera. Um, as we usually use black six ear cells for gene targeting, uh, and we use like the black six albino um, uh, mice for the donor blastocyst, such that we can see that the the the, the resulting mouse will be a camera which can be identified by their coat color. So the more black coat color means that the more ear cell contribution. So the, the so if the germ cells of this camera is derived from the targeted ear cells, then by breeding the male camera to a white type female, and if we get the black pups, which means that this uh, we have the germline transmission, then there's a chance that this pup will carry uh, this point mutation. Uh, carry this um, gene disruption. So this is the whole process to make a lockout by ESL homological combination. So we can see that this is a lot more complicated than the regular transgenic molecular protocol injection because we need to go through all these steps. However, this is a very useful uh, technology. We can use this technology to make a non-earlier we can introduce home mutations anywhere in this genome. We can insert a DNA fragment anywhere in the genome. That, that we can insert uh, like, uh, the legacy to track the gene expression. We can make a humanized mouse model, which means that we can disrupt, uh, basically replace a mouse gene with a human counterpart, such that we can make a humanized mouse model. And we can make conditional alleles, right? We can basically insert flux species to flux a gene such that by breeding this flux animal to a pre deleter, we can get a tissue specific uh, knockout. So basically, this almost recombination has been very, very useful in um, mouse model generation. Of course, as I said, this is a long process because we have to go through all this like, the designing, vector construction, ESL screening, vector injection, breeding. So usually, if everything goes right, we can get the germline transmission in about 12 months. So uh, this is just a very quick comparison of the two technologies I just introduced. The prolific injection for regular transgenic animal model generation and gene targeting for gene targeted animal model generation. You can see that this are two completely different technologies. For the protocol injection, we are doing the gene like the uh, modification directly in fertilized eggs. So the whole process is very straightforward. We can get finished the work in as short as three months. Uh, however, you have to keep in mind that the vector is randomly integrated into the mouse genome. And usually, and also the copy number is is, is kind of random as well. But usually we can we are get the tandem repeats somewhere in the mouse genome, but we don't know where it will go and how many copies will be integrated into the mouse genome. Uh, as a result, the reproducibility is very poor because of this random nature of you know random integration nature. Uh, so the different found animals may have different expression pattern uh, because you know different animals may carry different copy number or different location of the insertion. So if we use the product injection to make transgenic animals, then usually you will need to um, analyze m uh, multiple fungi lines. Uh, if we get a you know, consistent result, you can draw a solid you know, conclusion. Uh, in comparison, for the gene targeting, we're doing the gene homologous combination in ear cells. So we will need the homologous combination. The whole process, as I just mentioned, the whole process is kind of complicated. It takes about one year to get the animal. Um, however, as it is a targeted integration, uh, there's only one copy of the vector specifically targeted into the specific locus. So the animal, the animals that we get, Basically, they are the same. 
So the reproducibility is very good. Um, uh, the other uh, difference is that uh, between these two technologies that uh, is the good germline transmission ESLs uh, is only available in, um, in mouse and rat. Uh, so the homological combination can be used, uh, can only be used to generate in targeted um, mouse and the rat models. However, for the product injection, we can use this technology to generate almost, basically there's almost no restriction. We can, you know, gen generate different types of uh, transgenic animals using this product injection. So uh, next I would like to introduce uh, the new technology, uh, which is a nucleus uh, induced genome editing, uh, um, mostly the uh, CRISPR-Cas9 technology. I'm pretty sure that you are familiar with this uh, um, slide. Uh, so this is the mechanism for the CRISPR type, uh, CRISPR Cas9 technology. Basically, uh, for the CRISPR type, uh, Cas9 technology, the uh, gRNA specifically um, recognize a locus in the genome, and then which brings the Cas9 to the genome, and then uh, to, to the locus, which will uh, uh, create a double strand break. Uh, this double strand break will be repaired by either non homologous end joining or homology directly repair. So by the non-homologous end joining, because of the nature of this repair, this sometimes it will introduce either uh, insertion or deletion. So if we are introducing this double strand break in the coding sequence of a gene of your interest, then there's a chance to in introduce an indel, uh, such that uh, you know it will introduce a premature stop code premature stop coding downstream of this um, double strand break such that this gene function can be uh, you know inactivated and uh, this HDR is more precise than the NHEG so if you are uh, during this repair process if the cells are provided with a repair template which carries the homology sequences uh, that are homologous to the upstream and, and downstream sequences of this double strand break, then this homology directly repair will happen. Because, the, as I said, this HDR is more precise repair mechanism than NHEG. So if we introduce like an opponent mutation or we insert a DNA fragment in the middle of these two homology arms, then this point mutation or the fragment can be precisely introduced into this locus. Um, so this uh, nucleus induced genome editing uh, now has been widely used, mainly the CRISPR-Cas9 technology has been widely used in animal generation as well. So uh, here I just give you a, a few examples. For example, this one, we would like to um, do a standard lockout of this gene of interest. So what we can do is that we can design a gRNA uh, at five prime end, and then the other one at three prime end. And then we can basically co-inject uh, these two gRNAs together with Cas9 protein. And then there's a chance that both, uh, no, both no cell will be cut by Cas9, and uh, then this big fragment can be dropped out. So we can see that if we design two primers, F1 uh, and R1, then there's a chance that if the whole DNA fragment is dropped out, then we will have a much, we will be able to amplify a much smaller DNA fragment. So we can see that here is PCR screening result. We can see that um, in many of these animals, we can see that we can amplify a 6, 10. Uh, this pair DNA fragment, which means that the big DNA fragment, the big DNA the fragment has been uh, deleted, and the sequence of this found animal, found animals, one of the found animals shows that about 4.6 kb DNA fragment has been successfully deleted in these animals. 
And then the same technology can be used to introduce uh, flux species to create uh, flux animals for conditional called project. So in addition to the gRNAs, then we need to prepare a repel, like the donor vector, which carries, for example, this. Uh, in this uh, uh, example, we would like to flux axon 2, 3, and the 4. And then we designed the two gRNAs target like the intron 1 and intron 4. And then we prepared a targeting vector which carries the 5 prime homology arm, 3 prime homology arm, and the two log three sets, right? And then we perform co injection of this gRNA Cas9 and targeting vector. And then by the HDR, this area can be repelled by this targeting vector, which will lead to the, su the successful uh, insertion of these two log species into this uh, locus. And then the, this is the screening result. Uh, so basically, we perform the 5 prime PCR screening and the 3 prime PCR screening. Uh, and our PCR, as you can see, this PCR uh, amplification uh, are crossed, you know, have crossed the two homology arms. So, which means that as long as we have the, uh, uh, the PCR fragment, this will be successful um, insertion. And then we performed the thousand blood analysis on these animals to ensure that the targeting is correct. The other one is to, exclu to exclude the possibility of, uh, of the random migration of this, uh, this targeting vector. We can see that all these four animals are correctly targeted with no random integration. And also the sequence, you know, to confirm that the successful insertion of these two log speed sets, both 5 prime and the 3 prime. So we have used this um, this Cas9 technology generated many condition knockout uh, animals. The other application for CRISPR Cas9 is to introduce a poor mutation. Uh, this actually is um, more straightforward than the condition knockout because you really do not need to prepare a targeting vector. Instead, you just synthesize a, 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 you know, a, 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 a oligo that carries this mutation. For example, this one we would like to introduce a CAC GTG. Uh, you know, we would like to change the G to a CAC GTG to a CAC ATG. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, we just uh, perform the co-injection of 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 this the gRNA together with this repair oligo, and then there's a chance that this um, uh, this 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 uh, uh, this site will be repelled by this uh, uh, donor oligo, such that this uh, mutation can be successfully incorporated into this specific locus. And then the sequence shows that we can see that uh, we have here we have a double uh, peak, which means that one allele has been successfully mutated. And here it's just uh, 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 shows that the high efficiency of genome editing, you know, by this point mutation, uh, by CRISPR-Cas9 system, we can see that this, um, uh, the efficiency can be as high as 22%. The other application of this CRISPR-Cas9 CRISPR technology to um, generate animal models is to, uh, to insert a DNA fragment into a specific locus. Uh, this example, uh, in this example, we uh, introduced uh, uh, an expression cassette into Zosha 26 locus, a safe harbor for foreign gene expression. Uh, we can see that we introduced uh, this, um, used the gRNA to uh, to bring Cas9 to the intron 1, and then a donor vector is prepared, and which of course contains both homology arms. And in the middle, the expression cassette is uh, driven by a CAG promoter, followed by uh, a lock stop lock sequence and uh, the gene of interest. The reason 
that we um, introduce a lock stop locks is to make this uh, expression conditional such that basically the animal model gen we generated will not express uh, the gene of interest until you breed animal to a tissue specific create deleter such that this gene expression can be obtained at, in specific tissues. So here is the same, it's just a PCR screening, both 5 prime PCR, 3 prime PCR screening. And the sequence to confirm the successful insertion of the DNA fragment. And for the random integration uh, exclusion, we used uh, the, like the backbone PCR uh, to exclude uh, the random migration of, 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 of this uh, vector. And uh, we see that uh, this uh, result is uh, co co correlated with the southern blood very well. And here just uh, is a summary of the you know, show the efficiency of uh, the Zoja 26 locking. Um, you can see that the, the biggest DNA fragment that we have successfully inserted uh, into Zora 26 is about 15.5 KB. And we can see that even with that big, big DNA fragment, the efficiency is still not compromised. So the biggest advantage of CRISPR-Cas9 is that we can use the protocol injection technology to uh, obtain or to get the gene-targeted animal models. So we can see that the effort and the timeline is very, very comparable. It's almost the same as the regular transgenic. So uh, since the introduction of the CRISPR-Cas9 technology, this has been widely used you know, in, the, in the animal model generation. So the real advantage of this uh, technology is that it is highly efficient and very robust. And so basically, as I just said, it's pretty simple and very fast. And uh, the other advantage is that we can design multiple GRNAs uh, to perform co-injection such, such that the multiple targets can be modified simultaneously. And also, the other advantage is that uh, it can be applicable to both mice and rats as well as big animals. Yeah. So uh, the disadvantage of uh, this uh, technology is that uh, first, the potential IP issue. Uh, we know that uh, there are some um, uh, uh, you know discussions about this IP, uh, uh, and this IP is still not completely resolved. So uh, if you want to use your animal for uh, drug discovery, there may be some concerns at the moment. And the other one is the potential off-target mutagenesis. Um, so uh, there are lots of uh, uh, you know, publications to indicate that uh, there's, there's a big risk of this off-target. Um, and the, we, in our hands, we so basically, every fungal animal that we get uh, by CRISPR-Cas9 technology, uh, we will counter-screen the off-targets in this particular uh, in, 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 in this particular animal. Yeah, so we will uh, screen up to five, the most likely off-targets. Our um, data shows that um, the off-target probably is about under five percent. So it's um, is is this there's some, some off-target chance, but it's not a, a very big concern. And um, one, uh, one way to, um, to, you know, to uh, avoid this off-target mutagenesis issue or the problem is that even if you have off-targets in the mouse, you can try to breed the animal to a wild type animal, try to segregate this unwanted mutation for your design mutation, yeah. The other uh, uh, concern or the disadvantage of CRISPR-Cas9 technology is that uh, although that I have shown that it has been very uh, efficient or very simple to generate animal model, um, the compli complicated modification, like the, like the large DNA fragment deletion 
or the large, you know, is sometimes or large DNA fragment uh, um, replacement, like the humanist, you know, uh, the genome editing has been uh, very efficient or has been the result is very unpredictable. Um, so this is why that when we are applying this CRISPR Cas9 technology in our model, model, you know, animal model generation, we still uh, think that the ESL based gene targeting is still very useful for some complex projects. So this is why that uh, you know over the past few years we put a lot of effort in improving the ESL based gene targeting such that we can. Um, uh, like the shorten the turnaround time uh, and then to improve the gene targeting efficiency. And then after lots of R&D, we have uh, introduced uh, the turbo lockout platform uh, to, for the ESL gene targeted animal model generation. Uh, so this, by this platform, we can reduce the turnaround time from over one year to about six to eight months. So how this are uh, obtained. So basically, we introduced uh, two innovations for this platform. So first is that we have screened a few hundred uh, uh, like the ESLs from Black 6 background, and we have identified the two subcomponent ESLs. Uh, the reason that we call it subcomponent ESL is that, as I said, that shown before, for the traditional ESL gene targeting, if we introduce the targeted ESLs, like the black, uh, black 6 ESLs into mouse, black 6 uh, albino uh, uh, mouse embryos, the resulting animal that we get are the chimerical animals. Uh, so the more black contribution, the more chance to get the germline transmission. However, you will need to do the breeding, lots of breeding to get the F1 animal, to get the germline transmission. Believe it or not, it is not trivial at all. So, however, when we use this supercomponent ESLs, when this is coupled to our improved um, the ESL culture medium uh, and uh, coupled with our improved injection technology, we found that when we perform the injection, the animals that we generated are all black, which means that the superior human transmission efficiency is because these animals that are 100% derived from the ESLs. And then, then this is confirmed by sequence analysis because we know that this coat color in black six is uh, coated by uh, tyrosinase, by a point mutation. We can see that camera, we have double peak, and then in, 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 in the lower panel, it, this animal are 100% from ESLs. And then, then there's no surprise. When you breed, so, 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 we, so we call this animal, these black animals are uh, fungal animals, not chimerical animals. So there's no surprise when you breed the fungal animals to black six are band of females, all the animals that we get are all black. And then in comparison, so this on the lower right one, you can see that when we do this um, chimerical animal from the traditional you know, technology, uh, when you breed the chimerical animal to the, uh, to the black six are band of females, the most of the animals that we get are white. So this also means that these fungal animals are 100% uh, derived from the ESLs. So by this, by incorporating of this ESL and the injecting technology, we have successfully removed the camera breeding phase. So the other technology that we have uh, introduced into this turbo Turbo lockout platform is the incorporation of uh, a self deletion cassette into the targeted uh, into the targeting vector. 
We know that for the ESL gene targeting, there's a selection cassette, drug selection cassette, which has to be incorporated into the targeting vector such that it can be used for the ESL selection. And after we get tar the targeted ESLs, uh, we make a mouse from these targeted ESLs, right? And uh, this selection marker is also being incorporated into uh, the mouse genome. However, this cassette has to be removed because the presence of the new missing cassette in this locus may impact the gene expression. So, so traditionally we flux, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, we flank this new missing cassette use two foot sets. It's another um, recombinant recognition sets, which is very similar to flux P sets. Is that we when we have this animal, this animal can be bred to a flip deleter, uh, which this by flip bird recombination, this uh, um, this se uh, selection marker can be successfully removed. So basically, when you have animals, you will need to do another round of breeding to get the cassette uh, removal. Uh, so by incorporating of this self-deletion selection cassette um, into the targeting vector, this selection cassette can be functional, the same as the regular uh, selection cassette, which can be used for the drug selection. However, we will make a mouse from the targeted ESLs. This selection cassette can be self-removed in the gem cells by a, by a self uh, removing mechanism such that you really do not need to do uh, another round of breeding with the flip deleter. So, so uh, by incorporating of these two innovations, uh, we can successfully remove the camera generation and selection marker removal stage such that we can see that we can reduce the turnaround time from 12 months to as short as six months. So this is the fastest turnaround time, turnaround time for the ESL-based gene targeting in the industry. And after the introduction of this um, turbo lockout platform, it has been very well received. Uh, so it has the, it, the turnaround time is very similar to CRISPR as an technology, and then there's no off-target worry, there's no IP worry. So um, this, uh, we have used this turbo lockout um, technology to uh, introduce, you know, to uh, make a lot of um, ESL-based uh, gene targeting projects for, especially for our clients who use this animal for the drug discovery, because there's really no IP issue. Today, I have gone through the different technologies for item model generation we used here at Science in Biosciences. If you are not familiar with these technologies, don't worry. Our scientist team will work together with you to select the best technology, best approach for your projects. We look forward to working closely with you in the near future to meet your research needs. Thank you very much.